don't worry about, and, and you say, well, I'm, I'm still learning. Well, you just keep learning. You just keep doing what you be in place. And, and, and the time will come when you'll be presented with an opportunity and, and you'll be surprised at just how good you really are. You'll be just surprised and you'll be surprised at just how good you really are. So don't worry about what you don't have. Worry about what you do have. What you have is enough. And then I said, um, sometimes you have to be willing to use what others are throwing away. You have to be willing to do stuff that other people won't do anything with. Sometimes people have a gift and they sit on it. And so God has given you the gift and they are taking advantage of the opportunity that you step in. You step up and say, look, I know how to type. I know how to answer the phone. I know how to do this. I, know, I can pray. You step up into the plate. If somebody else don't want to do it, don't worry about them. You step up. Look, the, the, the man of God told the woman, say, go to your neighbors. Yes. And get their empty jars. Jars that they're not doing with. Cups that they had laying inside. Not doing anything with them. You go get them. And don't get just a few. He said, get a lot of them. Think big. Think outside of the box. And it was because she went and got a lot that she had enough to not only pay off her debts, but also enough for her and her son to live off of. And I want you to, I just, I want you to understand something. If she would have had more jars, she would have got more oil. Because she looked for another, apparently the oil was still ready to flow. She looked around for another oil, another jar, and, and there were no more jars. That's where the oil stopped flowing. If you're in God's will, and, and, and you're working, you just keep doing what you're doing, and the anointing will be there with you. Once you have, once you have finished the work that you're called to do, God will stop. But as long as there's work to be done and you continue in it, God will support you as you're doing His will. How many of y'all believe that? How do you believe that God will support you as long as you're doing His will? You don't even look like you have enough, but but you stay in God's will. He will He will support you. Let's go to another parable. We're doing good on time. Um, Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 10. Fill my cup, Lord. Give me some of that. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil and jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all, be they all became dry. They all got weary. They all got tired and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us, give us some of your oil. <laughs> Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us, for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with them to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Once again, a very familiar story. Yeah. The, the, the thing that, that jumped out at me about this story was the attitude of the foolish virgins. They, they possessed an attitude that said, that's, that's enough. That's good enough. It don't take all that. Obviously, they saw other bride and other virgins with oil. I mean, they were the people walking around. They had a lamp and they had oil. Some people, young people, some people don't study for their test. They don't even come to class all the time. You ain't got to go to that school to get no degree. You don't need no degree. My granddad's uncle's third brother, he didn't have a degree. <laughs> And, and they will tell you that it doesn't take all that. It doesn't take you being committed to something. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, it does take commitment. It takes everything that you got to live this life. Especially those of us who, say, uh, who are claiming we're saved. We're swimming against the current. We have to fight the tide. And it takes, it takes prayer. It takes reading your word. It takes coming to service. It takes fasting. It takes everything that you got to live. And so when somebody comes to you, it don't take all that. You say, for me it does. Yeah. For me, I need some extra oil. Yeah. And, and then when they start pulling on you, when you've done what you needed to do, and, and they're trying to get you to stop, and they get you out of the will of God, tell them, no, 
you know you better go and get it somewhere else. I'm not gonna be, I'm not the one. Because they were trying to get us to compromise. The, the world today will try to get us to change courses, to, to compromise, to sell out. And we have to, we have to say no. So sometimes people are going to be asking for something that you have, and, and, and the Holy Spirit will, will direct us that this person, this is a demon, and this is a, a wolf, and she's clothing. They just want to be your friend. They just want to get close to you. They just want to know a little bit about you. And, and, and those of us who are prayed up and who understand that the Spirit will tell us, you, you need to separate yourself from that person. Right. You, that, you don't need to be that person's friend. Maybe, maybe it will be your mentor who will come and say, I saw you getting out of the car the other day with, with X, Y, and Z. Um, so so what, what, what do you see in that situation? And they'll start walking you through it. They'll, hopefully they're trying to provoke you to think, is this person making deposits in my life? Or are they making withdrawals? And if they're making withdrawals, you got to know where to separate from the person. Because everybody doesn't want to go where you're trying to go. And it's an attitude that, I, for me, I ain't got to do all that. I'm, I, you know, I've got my game, i got my hustle, and I'm going to do it. And, and you let them game and you hustle right on out the door. Yeah. They're going about their way. The Bible wise, that they had a different attitude. They, 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 they had a plan for the unexpected. As we're living this life, stuff is going to come up that we didn't anticipate. The five took, and I'm thinking it's kind of like this. The five that were wise had a spare tire. They would drive down the road. You know, I don't expect to have an accident, but just in case my tire goes flat, I have a backup plan. The, the five that were wise, they had some money in the savings account. You know, I'm not expecting anything, but just in case I have a rainy day account. The five who were wise, they said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to actually study. You know, I know I've gone over this information, it's, it's familiar to me, but I'm going to spend about another two or three hours just looking over again before I take it. The five that were wise, they had oil in their lamps. They had a backup plan. And I'm telling you that stuff is going to happen. And, and the five room may tarry. Do you have a backup plan? Or are you going to be caught when he comes? And you go to, <laughs> you, you know that battle was tick, 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 tick when you try to start it. Tick, 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 tick. And you know that you had corrosion on your cable. And, and, and you know that that battery was weak. It, it, it had a 48 month warranty. You had it for 47 months. <laughs> and you go tick, 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 tick. And then the emergency comes up. And you run it down. And then you get mad at the car. <laughs> it was not the car's fault. Have a backup plan. But I was never wise. But I was foolish. The foolish did not take oil. They took the lamp. They were looking every bit the part. But they were not ready. The five that were wise had a backup plan. All right, let's go to uh, one. I've uh, got two more to go. Is this okay with y'all? Y'all yeah. wouldn't just say that maybe feel good with you. John chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Once again, a familiar story. All of these stories are very familiar to you. You've you heard it. On the third day, a wedding took place at Canaan, Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for serving the washing. Each holder from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw out some. Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine, after the guests now have had too much to drink. But you say the best till now. Couple things, fill it to the ground. Fill it to the ground. That suggests that there was no room for anything else. Fill it to the ground. We said, fill my cup, Lord. A lot of a lot of saints, I believe, and this is just from some observations that I've made, a lot of saints, we talked about that, that good enough, it, it, that's all it takes. A lot of saints will, will give God access to some of them. But not every saint is willing to make everything available to him. Well, Lord, you know, I gotta have plan B. We talk about plan B, but plan B is outside of God's will. Plan B is, is a, a, a little fellow on the side who, you know, when, when things get tight, you can run to him and get some money. 
he's not your husband. Plan B is, is, is 12 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock, you, you dialing on the phone. You calling that young lady who is not your wife. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to be in more graphic, right? That's plan B. But that's outside of God's will. Plan B is, is, is anyway, we'll stop with that. Fill, it to, fill me to the brim, God. The Bible says our God is holy. He wants us to be holy. The Bible says that God is coming back for a church. And, and, and that church, the, the, the people who go back with them, they can't have a spot. They cannot have a wrinkle. That suggests that that means everything about them has to be given over to him. Does that seem like the, what it's saying to you? No spot, no wrinkle. No place for, for a sin to be in our lives. We have to be completely given over to him. He says, fill them to the brim. There are no parts of my, my life, God, that I'm not willing to give over to you. I, I don't run home when my wife's not there and, and, and grab, get on the internet. I, I, I can't do that anymore. I, I don't I don't go out and and, 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 and when <laughs> I had a situation at the job the other day, I put some money into the uh, into the, the vending machine to get a soda. And and when I got my soda, there was 50 cents in the change place. Well, I know I'm gonna put in the right amount. And so that 50 cent was not my money. And so I took the money and I gave it to the to the uh, secretary, the HR secretary. Now some people say, Well that's your blessing, boy. That's not my money. I go to hell. I'm ready, God. Call me on in. And you say, well, what about that 50 cent at the vending machine? <laughs> what 50 cent? No, you know when you're at the job court and you had you pay for yourself? What if that? Am I willing to mess here for that 50 cent? Fill me to the brim, God. I don't want to leave any spot, any opportunity for the enemy to come in and, and get a foothold. We used to sing a song that said, don't let the devil drive, because if, if we let him drive, you don't let him ride. Because if we let it ride, he's going to want to drop. I don't want him in my house at all. I don't want him around. I know, I'm talking about John. I, I want to be filled to the brim. I want, I, want, I want all of my words to be words that are holy. I want all of my thoughts to be thoughts that are holy. I want my, my entire being to be devoted to give it over to God. Fill me to the brim, God. Fill me to the brim. Fill my cup. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, fill it to the brim, till it overflows. That's me. That's what I want. And I believe, I believe that for those of us who intend to go back to heaven, we have to have that same attitude. I God, I want all of you, none of me. Fill me to the brim, Lord. If we're going to have God in us, we can be assured He has no desire to share His brothers with anything that's not like Him. God will not cohabitate with evil, with darkness. The Bible says that. Darkness cannot comprehend the light. The two will not coexist. If you turn all the lights off in here, well, you got the windows. But if you got a real dark in the place, the moment, the moment there's a single beam of light, that takes away that darkness. Wherever you are, there should be enough light that shines outside of the darkness. The darkness will not be able to shine where we are. We are to be the light. We are to allow God's glory to shine through us. So that when we talk about giving some of that, so when we walk around, they say, you know what? I, I tried talking to another person who said they were saved, but they weren't like you. Tell me there was something different about you. That's how we ought to live. He would not, he would not share. He would allow you to fill yourself with anything else that you prefer that you prefer if you were not given full control. God will allow you to be dirty if you want to be dirty. God, I, God will allow you to be. Now, does he want you to be? No. But he will allow you to be dirty, nasty, stinky, if that's what you choose to be. But if you want to be clean, if you want to be whole, if you want to be full, he will do it. He, he, he takes pleasure, he says. He will make every opportunity for you to win, to overcome, to be victorious. Then, then, then Christ still said, draw some out. Draw some out. He didn't say you had to give everything you had. He said, draw some out. What's in you is way to be drawn out and put on this place for God's glory. God, God needs he, he who is looking. There, there was a meeting in hell. And, and I got about five minutes. And there was a meeting in hell. Satan came up. <laughs> what y'all doing? <laughs> We're serving God. God, Satan, what you doing? What you want this time? Oh, I'm just walking through up on the earth trying to see if there are some people that I could, you know, go and mess up their head, mess up their house. <coughs> I can consider Job. 
You want somebody? I'm gonna show you somebody. Go to Job. Oh no, I, I know about Job. So you protecting Job. You gotta hear it all around. You ain't gonna let nothing happen to Job. I tell you what, I, I, I make a deal with you because I know Job. I know what's inside Job. I give you access to him. I'm gonna take away the hedge. You can't touch his soul. But he's gonna curse you to your soul. The way the story ends, Job never cursed him. God wants us. He wants to say, have you considered my servant X, Y, Z? Have you considered my servant? I, let me tell you somebody who you can go and test. Let me tell you somebody who I know will stand up for righteousness. Try them. And you know what? I, I believe this. Now, you, you all may have a different, a different opinion. But I believe that there's sometimes Satan gets tired of trying us. He don't win the He don't get everything he can. He don't try our money. He don't try our family. He don't try the car. He don't try the job. He don't try the food, the stove. And, and when he sees that we're going to continue to raise our hands and say, Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, I'm sick of the most saved people. I believe mean, sometimes he walks away. I, I like to back stuff up with the scripture. Um, if you be the Son of God, Turn those songs into turn those songs into breathing. It is written. If you be the son of God, get up on this mountain and fall down. Cause it is written. No, it is written. But if you be the son of God, I give you all of this. And you just fall down and worship me. And, and when he saw that he was not going to win, the Bible says he departed for a season. I know that the same when if we stand up for holiness, if we stand up for righteousness, the devil will quit coming at us sometimes. And he knows that there's always a possibility. That's why he keeps coming back. And you know what they you know they're waving on the river that time. I'm gonna come back again. But when he understands that we are not giving in, the devil would have us either according to the word. According to the word. We just gotta make sure that we're full to the brim. That we're not giving them an opportunity to think that maybe, maybe if I call her one more time, she'll go out with me. She know I ain't saved. She saved. But but I just I, I think I can get her. And so I'm gonna call her one more time. Cause this time she said. <laughs> you know I don't like you. You know I, I'm saying you. Know I can't go up and, and giving them attention. That's why they keep calling back. If they say no, let me tell you something. I'm saved. I am not going to be dating anybody when I'm saved. You don't have to call me no more. You, you, there is no way in this world that I'm going to go out with you. Okay, let me go find somebody else. But when we give opportunity for the enemy, he'll keep coming back. But when we stand and we establish that border, he says, let me forget about this. All right. Um. And, and the last thing with this, he said, draw something out. When we give out just a little bit of what God has put in us, we've been with much, give me some of that. When we give out just a little bit of what God has put inside of us, don't you know that's, more, that's better than the best that some people have ever experienced? Some people haven't had anything like what we've had. Some people have no idea what it means to have a relationship, an unconditional love. Some people know nothing. Yeah, they, oh, they say they love me, but they abuse me. They took advantage of me. I don't know how to love. I don't know how to trust. When we get what we have, just a little bit of what we have is so much better than what the world has to offer. Christ said, he draw some. Draw some out and take it to the master of the beast. He took a man and said, well, this is some good stuff. Just a little bit of what we have is better than what the whole world can offer. We just have to be willing. We have to be available to make ourselves Surrender ourselves to God. Last one. Jesus feeds the 5,000. And you know the story. And there, there are a couple of things in here. This is in um, chapter, the, the uh, book of Mark, chapter 6. I'm not going to read it all. But you know the story of him feeding the 5,000. There are a couple of things in there that I think is appropriate for saints. When we said earlier that the life is going to come, the life is going to happen. In, in the the story, the apostles had, had been around Jesus all day. They had done some work, some miracles. And then they wanted to get away to a quiet place. And so they got in the boat and they were going across the water. The people saw them leaving and the people ran ahead of them to meet them there. 